Welcome to Mike Moments, your source for info from the minds behind the music, Delmar Brownthony. We're doing it up ADE style, Amsterdam Dance Event 2019 edition. Coming to you live from Amsterdam, Netherlands, which is so fantastic right about now because this person, I had to come all the way over here to interview her. <laughs> Being that the last time I saw her in New York, we didn't get a chance to really talk because she was real busy. But let me let you know some of the accolades of this beautiful woman straight up she's from the disco era for those who don't know she was the lead vocalist from freak who made weekend she was the lead vocalist of class action she was the lead vocalist of a lot of people that you probably didn't know about but she's going to tell you about it who say and then some revenge and then some and music so she's going to tell you so here we go christine wolchow what's going on hey Delmar, how you doing Fantastic. So listen, what brings us here tonight? I mean, real talk, because it's amazing that I didn't think I was going to run into you while I was here, but this is your home now. Yeah. So I want you to explain to the folks what brought your journey right here to Amsterdam. Well, to be, I mean, to be honest, I mean, when I, when I first originally came, or you mean what brought it to tonight? Well, let's start with tonight. Well, what brought me here tonight to you was the fact that um, the last time I ran into you was at the Red Bull uh, Festival in New York, which was like, had our time like, you know, accommodated for by Red Bull. And it was packed and it was hectic. And um, there was so much going on. There was so many people that I, had, I ran into, but I didn't get to spend time with them. Right. And the reason I made it my business to get by here tonight is because I just couldn't let you come to Amsterdam. And like, I'm here and and I didn't come and spend some kind of quality time where we could like really just sit and talk. I mean, we di I didn't come to do this interview. This interview just happened to come up while I was here and you said, would I mind doing it? I'm like, of course not, I wouldn't. But that's the reason that I'm in Amsterdam tonight, uh, at least where you are in Amsterdam, is because I wanted to be able to see you and, and, and really have a, some decent time with you before you disappear again because God knows when uh, our paths will cross. Exactly, and one thing that people don't understand about being the music and the connection and your part of the movement is that paths don't cross often, especially far away. I mean, and this everybody is, doesn't wake up every morning. Exactly, your eyes closed and then be like, Dag, I had my chance to see the person. And, and I didn't do it. Yes, and I really appreciate that, and I thank you once again. No, that's, that's, uh, that's a lesson that, uh, you know, that I've learned, and um, especially... Uh, living over here, especially for me, when people come through, I make it my business to see them. Because when I lived in the States, I could jump on a plane if somebody was sick or if somebody died or, you know, or if I wanted to see somebody. But now I'm losing friends where I can't afford to jump on a plane just to get there or go to a funeral or, or just to have a visit. I can't move like that anymore because I'm flying like 6,000 miles instead of 600 miles. And and a lot of people who crossed my path in my life, not necessarily in the music business, but who crossed my path in my life in general, have passed away since I have moved to Holland. And that hurts because um, I couldn't be there, you know? And it wasn't always financial. Sometimes I was working somewhere or whatever. But it, it, it hurt that I had grown up with these people. We, we, we became adults together. You know, we, we developed as, as human beings through a lifetime. And they got sick and they died. And I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to them. I didn't get a chance to, to spend that, that time with them. Because I kept saying, oh, I'm going to get to New York in the next year. And I'm going to get to New York next year. And it, it, uh, and I'm just not going to let that happen anymore. You know, if, if, um, if people don't want to reach out to me, I mean, that's fine too. But anybody that I feel like um, I'd like to see or I want to see, if they're coming through, I don't mind being the one to reach out and go, hey, man, how can I get to see you? How can we hang out for a little bit? You know, I may never see you again after today. An interesting thing about it is you always, and I told you behind the scenes, it gets real. And what I do appreciate about you coming through tonight is that you let it be known that there is a scene in Amsterdam for music versus what's going on 
oh, yeah. in the United States. Could you explain that to the folks about the scene here in Amsterdam? Well, there's a scene here. It's different. I mean, it's a lot different uh, as far as uh, where you, you know, the area that you fall in, the kind of work that you're doing and the places that you're working. Um, I mean, they have the, the big shows just like uh, America has the big shows. They're far and few between. But there's lots of hotel work. There's lots of cafe work. There's lots of private party work. And um, it may not pay that big, big, big money that you want to get, but it's allowed me to be able to make a living. It's allowed me to be able to leave a job that I hated, you know, even though I made good money at it, I hated, um, and go back into working music full time and get respect um, from peers here for what I do and 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 be able to to live and pay rent and eat and take care of my my health and 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 things like that and and shop and you know do the regular shit that everybody likes to do you know yeah i'm not telling you i'm rolling in dough but it ain't about that for me not at this point in my life i am making music on a regular basis and i'm happy i'd be happier if i was rich i'm not going to lie <laughs> well what's interesting about that being that the royalty check, I think, is a little bit different now based on the fact of what happened as far as the residuals with the disco era and also when they used you on samples. Speaking of which, listen. Child is not even going to them samples. I mean, if I hear well, 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 one more time on one more record, I'd like to pull my hair out. I really, really would. And, you know, they say that um, imitation is a form of flattery. Okay, I'm tired of being flattery. Pay me, bitch. Okay, you know, I don't need to be flattered. Flattery don't pay my rent. Okay, I'm being honest with you. I, I think it's wonderful that you like what I did, but pay me for it, you know? Or at least ask me, do you mind if I use it? Okay, I, even that. I mean, I've had people approach me and say, you know, Christine, I want to do so-and-so, but I don't have any money. I'm like, okay, well, if I can help you do such and such, I'll do it, you know, because I like the song or blah, blah, blah. If you get a deal, that's one thing. But they don't even ask. They just take you and they chop you up or they sound effect you up or they put new chords behind you up or do whatever they fucking feel like doing and, and don't even give you the common courtesy of saying, Hey, you know, I had this idea to do so and so, or I want to do so and so, or do you mind if I do so and so? It's like you don't exist. That pisses me off, and I've been through that too many times in my life. I think that is very unfair to the artist because what it does, it degrades your character. It takes away what you put into the situation. I tell you what, one thing I can say, you are definitely a class act. And you kept it real for so long now. And I would just hope that you, not to say that you don't appreciate what these so-called producers, DJs have done with your work. But at well, least that, have I gotta, that's what I got. I got to say this, you know, and somebody got mad at me on, a, on one of these pages, you know, because he put up uh, uh, some song uh, that I had done or was a part of. I don't even remember what it was now. And um, I'm listening to it. And I hear this repetition and this... I said, where's the song? Where's the song? All I heard was, you know, like ad-libs and, and, and pieces of chorus. I'm like, where's the song? The whole integrity of the song was gone. And he says, what do you mean, where's the song? That's the groove. Groove? You know, everybody who's got some turntables thinks they're a fucking producer now. And, 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 and Facebook has just made it go crazy. And... Don't get me wrong. I love all you DJs who are honest to good DJs that I know are DJs, especially the ones who played my my records, you know, and 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 helped me be out there. But these other people that have a turntable and never been in the side of studio, they figure they cut this out and cut that out and put some sound effects here. They call that creating. Creating is when you can think of some shit out of the top of your head from nothing. That's creating for me. That will always be creating for me. 
All right. But when you take somebody else's stuff and just pull this out, throw that away, throw that away, throw that away and put some sound effects and some repeats in there and you call yourself being a producer. I don't have no respect for that. I'm sorry. And it's too many of them on Facebook, honey. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to take it back real quick. Let these people know who you were affiliated with when it came to the disco era, songs they may not have known, or groups that you may not, they may not have known that you led vocal in. Oh, um, well, I mean, I was a lead singer and uh, music arranger um, for music. I wrote songs for them. I was part of the production and the arrangement of both of the albums. Um, I did uh, Pouze. I was the lead for that. Um, class Action, Freak. Um, I did the lead vocals for Revanche. Um, oh God, what was the other name of this one? Um, to you, uh, um, oh God. See, that's what happens when you get old. But it's you okay. Gotta th- you got to think about what the hell you did. Right. I did lead vocals for uh, Spooks in Space for uh, August Darnell. Um, uh, what was this thing it was right at the top of my head and I don't want to to sound like I'm trying well I did this and this and this and this and this and this it's just that there was so many things that I was a part of and not just myself I'm talking about myself and people like Josh Brown and Lucy Martin who weren't just known for chic or job you know inner life or like myself music we did so many things in the studio. There were people like Yvonne Lewis and um, um, Norma Garbo and um, uh, Larita Gaskins. Um, oh my God, uh, Althea um, Althea Rogers. Uh, who else did I used to use? I mean, all these different singers, you know, who were doing stuff with me for Lolita Holloway and Candy Staten and Eddie Kendricks and the Main Ingredient. Uh, Benny King, yes. um, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, um, uh, Arthur Prysock, uh, it, it just, it, you know, it, like I said, I have to sit down sometimes and try to remember a lot of the work that, that a lot of us did. It's not just me. I was lucky to be a part of a lot of it. And by working so closely with Patrick and having the relationship with Patrick Adams that I did, For so many years, I was able to be a part of so many great pieces of music. And some of some some of the music I've heard Patrick do, I bet you're not even aware of. You know? Because the record companies took what they wanted, you know, and they put that out. I tell you, I gotta mention this. He did a piece of music about the space shuttle. Really? And it was and it was done on a Sal Soul album. If I had to sit here and tell you which album right now, I'd be lying. He played everything on the album, and he, he did it on synthesizer, drums, you know, guitar. I mean, because Pat was gifted like that. He would go in and lay a drum track down. When we first started working together, and there was no big record companies and no big money. He would go in and put a drum track down. Then he'd go in and he'd sit down and he'd put a bass track down. Then he'd put the guitar track down. Then he'd put the piano track down. And then we'd go in and put vocals on top. This is how a lot of the stuff that I did with him in, in, the, in the early years came from. There wasn't no musicians coming in and doing this and doing it. That was all Patrick. You know? So I, 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 I learned so much from him. I... I I got to be able to be a part of so many things with him that when the money did come in from record companies and we started doing like the music and the Lolita Holloways and the Candy Statens and Rainbow Brown and all these people, he gave me um, the room to say, Pat, I want to put this part in. Okay, let me hear it. Sometimes he would just give me a piece of music and say, okay, tell me what you hear. Put the backgrounds to it. He gave me a lot, a lot of freedom to to develop my own creativity, you know, and 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 I, I'm grateful for that, you know. And and people are not aware that they think that, oh, you just went in and you did this and you did. no, this was years of of being in the studio doing that, you know, years. 
But um, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. No, you're not. <laughs> so, what's next for you? Uh, to be honest with you, I can't tell you. I would like to tell you, but I can't tell you. I want to tell you. Because there's, to me, there's this little controversy going on that I'm really not happy with. And I'm going to put that controversy to rest. And until I have all my ducks in a row, I'm not going to say anything about it. But they know who they are. Okay. <laughs> and we both know what's up behind the scenes. So let the folks know where they can find you on the net. They want to get in touch with you, find out what concerts you got going on right here or when you're coming back to New York. Let them know what you got going on. Well, on Facebook, I have the Christine Wilshire Artist page, which always puts up everything that I'm doing, whether it's out of the country or it's, you know, in, in, uh, in Holland. And quite frankly, let me put a shout out out there to all you DJs who are doing all these shows and, you know, and putting all these things together. Give a sister a shout out. You understand? Give a sister a shout out. Help her make a dollar. You know, help her keep her legacy alive. Okay, you play my records. So come on and, uh, you know, help me get on the bill, baby. You heard it from Christine Wilshire, who's definitely giving to you rough, rugged, and raw. Live from the Amsterdam dance event on an intimate setting that we're having tonight or wherever you're listening here from. And I thank her so much for taking time out of her busy schedule for giving light to what the situation is when it comes to this music industry because it definitely is a doggy dog world even though it might seem glitzy and glamorous she lets you know what's really going on so i thank you so much christine for taking the time out once again thank you you're welcome you're truly delmar brown your source for info from the minds behind the music and this was a mic moment with christine rush